Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning I am Dr Pushpalata K Professor and HOD of Anatomy JSS Medical College JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research Mysore Okay. So, today in this session, we will discuss about the gross anatomy of the pons. So, why is this pons important? Okay. So, here we have a history where a 55 year old male patient comes with a history of sudden onset of dysarthria and appendicular ataxia, then right hemibody weakness and blurred vision and he was a smoker. On examination, he had a horizontal left gaze palsy with horizontal nystagmus. MRI of brain showed a small lesion in the left median pons. Okay. So, after this uh, session, let us see what is the anatomical basis for these signs and symptoms. Okay. So, why this studying pons is important, we will know after the end of this session. So, learning objectives for this session is describe the external features of pons, describe the internal features that the transverse section of pons at upper and lower level, describe the cranial nerve nuclei in pons with their functional components, describe the blood supply of pons and discuss the clinical anatomy of pons. So, as we know the pons is a bridge between the uh, midbrain and the medulla okay? and also it transmit the information from the spinal cord and with the higher part of the brain parts and it acts as a motor a relay station for the motor information between the cortex and the cerebellum. So, this connects between the uh, midbrain and the medulla as well as the information connection between the cortex and the cerebellum. Okay. So, now the pons as we know pons means a bridge. Okay. It is almost 2.5 centimeter length. Okay. It is also called as a meaten cephalon. It is present on the clivus in the middle cranial fossa. Okay. And here you can see it is the posterior surface it forms the floor of the fourth ventricle. So, anteriorly pons and medulla and posteriorly cerebellum forms this fourth ventricle. So, the uh, posterior part of the pons is related to the fourth uh, ventricle. Okay. So, now let us see the external features of pons. Okay. So, it has got a ventral surface and a dorsal surface okay and there is a superior border that is between the midbrain and the pons and the inferior border between the pons and the medulla and you can see the surfaces are striated because the cerebellopontine fibers they cross over and go to the opposite cerebellum so that you can see here the striations okay now coming to the ventral surface so you can see in this image in the ventral surface, there is a sulcus, okay, the longitudinal sulcus that is called as a sulcus basilaris, okay. This lodges the basilar artery and this uh, pons is connected to the cerebellum through the middle cerebellar peduncle, okay. So, here you can see the middle cerebellar peduncle on either side it is connected to the cerebellum through the middle cerebellar peduncles where the cerebellopontine uh, fibers they run through this peduncle okay and at the junction between the pons and the middle cerebellar peduncle we can see there is a root of the trigeminal nerve is attached okay so at the junction between the peduncle and the pons there is attachment of the trigeminal nerve okay and there is a the inferior border or we call it as a horizontal sulcus that is the pontomedullary junction. Okay. So, this pontomedullary junction, it lodges the cranial nerves. That is when you go from medial to lateral, you have the sixth, that is the abducent nerve. Then we have the facial, then vestibulocochlear nerve. Okay. So, from medial to lateral, sixth, seventh and eighth cranial nerves are attached at this uh, pontomedullary junction. 
another important feature ok. So, what is important here is that is the CP angle ok. So, this is the CP angle that is the cerebellopontine angle ok. So, this cerebellopontine angle is very very important clinically because so many structures it is the junction between the pons, cerebellum and the medulla. So, as we see the lot of cranial nerves are uh, attached here and the cerebellum is there and pons and medulla and the cerebellar peduncle is there. So, any tumor pressing at this area it causes a, a lot of cl uh, clinical uh, importance it has got. So, that produces CP angle syndrome ok. So, this is the ventral surface. Now, let us see what is there in the dorsal surface. So, you can see here in the dorsal surface as I said this forms the floor of the fourth ventricle ok. So, here in the middle you can see there is an elevation this is called as the facial colliculus ok. So, this is the facial colliculus this is produced due to the uh, facial nerve and the abducens nerve which is present here they forms the facial colliculus ok. And here you can see there is a sulcus limitans this separates the sensory from the motor area ok and there is a here this area is called as a vestibular area because the vestibular nucleus is present ok and here in the sulcus limitans here ok at this they are called as a superior fovea and here the discolorated area that is called as a locus ceruleus. So, this is what we see on the dorsal surface mainly it forms the floor of the fourth ventricle ok. Now, let us see the internal features of the pons ok. So, internal features when we see here, so you can see in the center there is a trapezoid nucleus and the trapezoid body ok. So, this separates ok or this is the junction between the ventral part that is called as the basilar part and the posterior part is called as a tegmental part ok. So, this is the basilar part is nothing but the continuation of the pyramid of the medulla ok. The rest of the medulla continues as a tegmental part ok. So, anteriorly it is the basilar part and posteriorly is the tegmental part ok. And this basilar part is nothing but the continuation of the pyramidal tract and the rest of it continues as a tegmental part. And this basilar part is common throughout the pons, but whereas this tegmental part there is a variation in the tegmental part. So, that we will see what it is ok. Now, coming to the basilar part ok. So, in the basilar part you see there is a you can see there is a fibers running here ok. So, they are nothing but the as I said it is a continuation of the pyramidal uh, part of a medulla. Here you see there is a cortico nuclear fibers, cortico pontine fibers and cortico spinal fibers ok. This cortico nuclear fibers it is from the cortex ok and it comes through the pontine nucleus and they connected with the cranial nerve nucleus it is for the coordination of the head neck and with the eye and the ear movements. So, it coordinates with this cranial nerves with the cortex ok and this cortico pontine fibers ok. So, from the cortex they come to the pontine uh, nucleus here ok then go to the cerebellum. So, this acts as a bridge between the cortex and the cerebellum through the cortico pontine fibers ok. And another important one is the cortico spinal fibers ok. So, that is the from the cortex it is going descending then it crosses at the pyramid and goes to the opposite side of the body. So, that is the cortico spinal fibers. So, these knowing these what are the structures present is very very important because when the patient presents with some of the clinical symptoms we need to identify or locate where is the lesion ok. Then another thing what we see is here you can see there is a in between these fibers. So, there is a pontine nucleus are present ok. So, this pontine nucleus ok connected with the cerebellum through the ponto cerebellar fibers to the opposite side ok. So, these fibers the ponto the cortico pontine fibers relay in the pontine nucleus go to the opposite cerebellum through the uh, ponto cerebellar fibers through the middle cerebellar peduncles ok. So, here it is uh, 
as I said, it is a connection between the cortex and the cerebellum for the precision coordination of a voluntary movement. Okay. So, for coordination of voluntary movements from the cortex to the cerebellum, this connects. Okay. And then in between the in uh, posterior to that you see there is a, a trapezoid body okay and this is the basilar part and this is the common for throughout the pons okay now let us see okay so tegmental level as i said the basilar part is same but the tegmental level there is a difference at the two levels okay first we will see at the facial colliculus that is the lower level okay the facial colliculus so what are the structures we see here okay so <coughs> here you see there is a medial longitudinal fasciculus okay so just behind this trapezoid body you see there is a medial lamniscus okay so this medial lamniscus is nothing but which is carries the fibers from the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus okay so these fibers when they come to the pons they rearrange themselves from sagittal to the coronal where the cuneate fibers becomes medial and gracilis fibers becomes lateral Okay, then lateral to that what we have is the spinal lamniscus. It is nothing but the continuation of the lateral uh, spinothalamic tract. Okay, so then we have uh, in the median plane what we have is the medial longitudinal fascicle, okay, tectospinal okay, tract and the rubrospinal tract. This medial longitudinal fascicle is nothing but the ascending and descending fibers of the vestibular nuclei. Then we have is the tectospinal tract that is from the tectum of the superior colliculus to the spinal cord. This is for the uh, visual coordination between the spinal cord and the because going from the uh, tectum of the midbrain. Then is the rubrospinal tract from the red nucleus to the spinal cord okay so these are the median position okay you see the these three white matters now next what we see is the gray matter okay so where you see the there is a spinal nucleus so the tract of the trigeminal nerve okay and then we have the abducent nerve nucleus okay you can see the abducent nerve nucleus with the abducent nerve then we see the facial nucleus the motor nucleus of the facial nerve with the facial uh, nucleus with the facial nerve which emerges through the this basilar part okay and here you can see the motor nucleus of the facial nerve actually which is first there is a it is a dorsolateral to the abducent nucleus okay then what happens it is winds around this abducent nucleus okay then it comes to the ventrolateral position okay it comes to the ventrolateral position so this is the motor nucleus is searching for the sensory component okay which was uh, ventrolateral becomes winds around this comes to the ventrolateral and the present position which is actually close to the the sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve so this process of motor component searching for a sensory is called as a neurobiotaxis okay so this is the neurobiotaxis then another what we see is the vestibulocochlear nucleus okay the ventral and dorsal nucleus of the cochlear nerve and the vent uh, vestibular nucleus so the vestibulocochlear nerve also seen at this region so this is the facial colliculus so this uh, the winding around this facial now over the abducent uh, nucleus forms this elevation in the floor of the fourth ventricle that is called as a facial colliculus and another nucleus what we see here is the superior olivary nucleus next we will see the tegmental uh, cross section at the little rostral level okay so here this level is passes through the principal sensory nucleus and motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve okay and here there is you can see there is a fourth ventricle is seen okay it is roofed with the superior medullary velum okay and here uh, here you can see the as i said the basilar part is same uh, 
okay he, you can see here just uh, behind this trapezoid body you can see there is a coronally oriented lamniscus okay as you know there is a medial lamniscus then there is a trigeminal is added here that is from the trigeminal tract then the spinal lamniscus is lateral to this that is as i said it is a continuation of the lateral spinothalamic tract okay and the lateral lamniscus this is from the uh, cochlear uh, part that is the auditory pathway okay and the important uh, what we see here in the median plane again it is the medial longitudinal fascicle tectospinal and rubrospinal tract you see and you see here is the superior cerebellar peduncle in the dorsolateral part there is appearance of the section of the superior cerebellar peduncles so this uh, superior cerebellar peduncles carries the fibers from the cerebellum to the tectum and from the red nucleus okay so this carries the fibers from the rubro cerebellar fibers or passes through superior cerebellar peduncle okay now the what we see is there is a i said it is a at the level of the trigeminal nucleus you see there is a motor uh, nucleus of the trigeminal nerve laterally is the uh, sensory the principal sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and the fibers from the mesencephalic root of trigeminal nerve is also coming along with this and forms the trigeminal nerve okay so till now what we have studied is okay so you know the pons is a bridge between the midbrain and the medulla it has got a ventral surface and a dorsal surface superior border and inferior border in the ventral surface we see there is a sulcus basilaris okay and there is a middle cerebellar peduncle then there is a trigeminal nerve is attached okay with the uh, junction between the middle cerebellar peduncle and the pons okay and there is a cp angle where that is the cerebellopontine angle where all these three structures that is the pons medulla and cerebellum meet okay and here you can see this is at the level of the facial colliculus in the it is divided in the internally when you see the uh, ventral basilar part it is a continuation of the pyramidal tract okay and uh, there is a trapezoid body just uh, ventral to that you see there the dorsal to that there is a trapezoid body dorsal to that what you see is the medial lamniscus and spinal lamniscus in the median region you see the middle longitudinal fasciculus tectospinal and rubrospinal tract okay and at this level we see there is a uh, uh, trigeminal nerve uh, nucleus with the tract then you see the abducens nerve nucleus okay and there is a facial the motor nucleus of the facial nerve then vestibular cochlear nucleuses and there is a superior salivary nucleus this is at the level of the facial colliculus okay another level is just rostral to that where the basilar part it is same okay just dorsal to that there is a added is the trigeminal lamniscus and lateral lamniscus added and in the median position they are the same fibers are running that is the medial longitudinal fascicle tectospinal and rubrospinal and there is appearance of the fourth ventricle here roofed by the superior medullary velum and there is appearance of the superior cerebellar peduncle with the trigeminal nucleus okay so this is what we see the little rostral level okay now we have studied the gross anatomy what are the external features what are the internal features what we see now let us see what are the cranial nerve nucleus present in the pons okay so we see the motor nucleus what are the motor nucleus present in the pons you have the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve okay then there is the abducens nerve nucleus okay and the motor nucleus of the facial nerve okay then the sensory what we see is the the principal sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve actually it extends okay from the medulla pons and it also goes till the midbrain okay and there is also a the uh, vestibulo cochlear nuclei which is present almost in the pons as well as little bit in the medulla it is seen okay so these are the nucleus what we see so what are these nuclear the functional component of this okay now let us take the trigeminal nerve 
I said the trigeminal nerve has motor component and sensory component. This motor component is the special visceral efferent component. Okay. So, that means special visceral means it supplies the muscles derived from the branchial arches, the pharyngeal arches. Okay. So, that is the muscles of mastication. Then the sensory component of this trigeminal nerve is the general somatic afferent which carries the touch and pressure from the face. Okay. So, the trigeminal nerve has both a motor as well as sensory component. Now, coming to the abducent, the motor component is the general somatic efferent. Okay. That means it supplies the lateral rectus muscle. Okay. Now, coming to the facial, as again the facial has both motor and sensory. So, this motor part of the facial now is the, again it is a special visceral efferent. This supplies the muscles derived from the second pharyngeal arches. Okay. So, that is the muscles of facial expression. Okay. So, that is the special visceral efferent. The sensory component is the superior salivatory nucleus. It is a general visceral efferent. It supplies the submandibular, sublingual, nasal and lacrimal glands through the submandibular gland, ganglion. Okay. So, that is the sensory component of the facial nerve. Both this vestibular and cochlear nerves that is the special somatic afferent. Okay. So, they carry the fibers. The vestibular nerve carries the fibers for the equilibrium and cochlear uh, nuclei or the nerve carries for the auditory fibers. Okay. So, this is the functional components of the cranial nerve which is present in the pons. Okay. Now, let us see. So, it has got lot of important structures. What is the blood supply it receives? Okay. It mainly receives the uh, blood supply from the basilar artery okay, and anterior inferior cerebellar artery. These are the two main arteries which supplies the blood to the pons. Okay. You can see this is the basilar artery. Okay. So, it is formed by the uh, uh, this vertebral artery combined together join and forms the basilar artery at the lower part of the pons. Okay. Then it is largest in this groove where it gives the minute pontine branches. Okay. So, you can see there is a minute branches. They are the pontine branches. Okay. And the venous drainage they go into the inferior petrosal sinus and basilar venous plexus. Okay, let us study in detail how these arteries they supply. Okay, I said the basilar artery gives a pontine branches. Okay, so it gives a paramedian branches which supplies the paramedian region. So, you know what are the structures at the paramedian region? Okay, so the medial longitudinal fascicles, tectospinal and rubrospinal. Then you have the medial lamniscus and there is a spinal lamniscus. Okay, at the lower part. And in the basilar part, you have the main uh, component that is the corticonuclear and corticospinal fibers are running here. Okay. So, this paramedian uh, fibers, this is supplied by the paramedian branches. Okay. And also, it supplies the periaqueductal gray matter. Okay. Then we have another branch that is called as a circumferential branches. Okay. That means, as we know, circumferential means it winds around the pons. Okay. So, again this circumferential we have a long as well as the short branches. So, these circumferential branches supplies the lateral pons. Okay. Then the middle cerebellar peduncle, then floor of the fourth ventricle and the lateral part of this tegmentum of the pons. Okay. So, this the median portion is by the uh, paramedian branches of basilar artery, lateral part of the whole thing is supplied by the circumferential branches, both short as well as the long circumferential branches. And we know this anterior inferior cerebellar artery is a branch. As soon as the basilar artery is formed at the lower part of the pons, it gives a branch that is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery and this supplies only the lower pontine areas. So, that is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Okay. So, here in this image what we can see is the number 1 what is shown here. Okay. As you go from caudal to the rostral level. Okay. So, you can see what are the structures also present. So, let us correlate. Okay. So, here the paramedian branches the area number 1. 
okay so where here this the area number 1 what is shown here is supplied by the paramedian branches of basilar artery okay and the uh, dorso lateral okay or the posterolateral area is supplied by the long circumferential branches of basilar artery as well as the anterior inferior cerebral artery the number 2 what is written here and this that is the dorsolateral or posterolateral part of the pons okay so we can this area is supplied by the uh, long circumferential branches both from basilar as well as anterior inferior cerebellar and what you see here the number 3 what is written that is anterolateral area of the pons okay that is supplied by the short circumferential branches of basilar artery okay and the area number 4 the most posterior part okay so what is shown in the dot here the number 4 that is supplied by the long circumferential branches of basilar as well as it also receives from the superior cerebellar artery only this area receives from the superior cerebellar artery especially where you have the superior cerebellar peduncle that area is received at the from the long circumferential as well as the superior cerebellar artery so till now what we have studied okay we have studied the gross anatomy of the pons where it has got the anterior surface posterior or we call it as a ventral and dorsal you can see there is a middle cerebellar peduncle connects the pons with the cerebellum then the trigeminal nerve is attached at this junction then there is a cp angle and the what we studied the cross section that is the interior of the cerebral uh, sorry interior of the pons and the ventral part is the basilar part it is nothing but the continuation of the pyramid of the medulla okay and uh, at the this teg posterior is called as the tegmental part in the tegmental part at the level of the facial colliculus you see there is a medial lamniscus and only spinal lamniscus then in the median region you see the white fibers as medial longitudinal fascicle tectospinal and rubrospinal we see the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve okay nucleus of the abducent facial nerve nucleus vestibulocochlear nucleus and superior salivary nucleus okay little rostral level the all the same except there is a trigeminal lamniscus is added here and there is a lateral lamniscus is added and there is a cavity of the fourth ventricle it is roofed by the superior medullary velum and there is appearance of the superior cerebellar peduncle and the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve both, both motor and sensory nucleus is seen okay and the cranial nerves what we see here is the uh, motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve motor nucleus of the abducent, motor nucleus of the facial nerve, salivary nucleus both superior and inferior, then there is a sensory nucleus of the trigeminal and vestibulocochlear nucleus and it receives the blood supply mainly from two arteries that is the basilar artery and anterior inferior cerebellar artery. The paramedian region is by the paramedian branches, the lateral area is by the circumferential branches both short as well as the long circumferential branches. Now let us see the case. Now we have studied the anatomy, the interior of the pons. So now let us see how these symptoms are, why it is important to study the pons. Okay. So here there is a patient, male patient with 55 years old, comes with a history of sudden onset of dysarthria and appendicular ataxia. So, why is this dysarthria and appendicular ataxia? We know because there is a cranial nerves are involved and there is an involvement of the ataxia means it is related with the cerebellum. So, there is you see the ponto cerebellar fibers and right hemibody weakness that is mainly because it is the affected is the corticospinal fibers and there is a blurred vision is there because there is the fibers which is going the visual fibers are affected and this abducent nerve is there that is affected and as we know it is a probably because history of smoking is because there is a any blockage of these arteries can be happen there and there is a horizontal left gaze palsy with the horizontal nystagmus that is because of the uh, involvement of the cranial nerves that is 7th and 8th cranial nerves. So, there is a 
brain showed a small lesion on the left median pons ok. So, this is the why the anatomical basis for this is the because involvement of the median region and the cranial nerve nucleus are present. So, he presents with all these signs and symptoms ok. So, what is the other importance of this is the anteromedial there is an infarction ok. You can see there is anteromedial infarction ok. This causes the hemiparasis ok or what called as a hemiplegia ok and contralateral ataxia because the cerebellopontine fibers go to the opposite cerebellum. So, there is a contralateral ataxia and there is a dysarthria and there is a nystagmus ok and often there is a ipsilateral facial palsy ok if there is any anteromedian infarction ok. So, this area where the pons harbors the descending motor fibers nucleus of the 6th and the 7th cranial nerves and ponto cerebellar fibers. So, this how this area is and also we know this is supplied by this artery. So, if the patient present with these symptoms we need to locate. So, the lesion in the paramedian. So, what is the artery supplying there ok. And as I said the importance of this uh, CP angle ok. So, if there is any tumor which is pressing here at the CP angle. So, this presses on the inferior and the middle cerebellar peduncles ok. Then there will be involvement of the spinal laminiscus ok. Then the spinal tract of trigeminal nerve and 7th and 8th nerve also affected ok. So, because of this so the patient might present with the tinnitus, deafness and vertigo because there is an involvement of the uh, 8th cranial nerve that is the vestibular cochlear nerve and he can also have a intentional tremor, dysmetria and ataxia because there is a involvement of the cerebellum ok. You can also present with a loss of pain and temperature of the face of the same side ok because of the involvement of the spinal trigeminal tract and also on the opposite side there is a loss of pain and temperature of the face and forehead due to the involvement of the spinal laminiscus ok. And also he can present with the lower motor uh, a neuron lesion, then hyperacusis because the facial nerve supplies the stapedius and also the loss of taste in the anterior two third of the tongue, all this because of the symptoms of the facial nerve. So, if there is any tumor at this region, we should if the patient presents with so many symptoms, we need to think there is a pathology at the cerebellopontine angle. Ok. Then occlusion of this paramedian short circumferential branches ok of basilar artery where it involves the uh, 6th and the 7th nerve and the pyramidal tract these are the short uh, circumferential branches ok. So, this leads to two syndrome one is the Raymond syndrome another is the Millard Gobler syndrome. Okay. What is this Raymond syndrome is as we know it is the involvement of the paramedian region it involves the uh, sixth and the uh, sixth nerve and the contralateral hemiplegia because of the involvement of the corticospinal tract. So, this is called as a Raymond syndrome ok. So, if it involves only the sixth nerve and corticospinal tract we call it as a Raymond syndrome where there is a ipsilateral paralysis of the uh, lateral rectus and contralateral hemiplegia ok. Same thing if this affects the facial nerve and the contralateral hemiplegia that is the corticospinal tract involvement we call it as a millard gobler syndrome ok. So, looking at this whether it is the involvement of the lateral rectus or the facial palsy you can call it as it is either the millard gobler or a Raymond syndrome. So, looking at these we need to differentiate where the lesion is. To summarize ok what we have studied is the gross anatomy of the pons ok. Pons has got a ventral surface and a dorsal surface ok and at the interior when you see the ventral basilar part ok and dorsal tegmental part ok that is the trapezoid body is differentiate the basilar part and the tegmental part. This basilar part is nothing but the continuation of the pyramid of the medulla and this rest of the medulla continues as a tegmental part. Ok. And this basilar part or we also see the important fibers ok that is the corticonuclear fibers, corticospinal fibers run in the uh, basilar part and also the pontocerebellar fibers ok that from the cortex the fibers come relaying the pontonucleus and then go to the opposite cerebellum. 
okay that is the ponto cerebellar fibers and this basilar part remains same at all the level of the pons okay just dorsal to that you see there is a trapezoid body so in front of the trapezoid body we see the medial lamniscus okay and you see lateral to that there is a spinal lamniscus okay in the median region we see there is a medial longitudinal fascicles tectospinal tract and rubrospinal tract okay so at the level of the facial colliculus we see the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve nucleus of the obducent nucleus of the facial nerve superior salivary nucleus and dorsal and ventral nucleus of the cochlear and vestibular nucleus this is at the level of the facial colliculus little rostral level we see there is an appearance of the fourth ventricle okay with the superior medullary velum then appearance of the superior cerebellar peduncles the paramedian this remains the same and even the basilar part remains the same except here in the coronally oriented you can see the four lamniscus that is the medial trigeminal spinal and lateral lamniscus and this level is at the level of the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve you see there is a medially motor nucleus is placed and laterally sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and the pons is mainly supplied by the basilar artery and anterior inferior cerebellar artery okay so this basilar artery gives the paramedian uh, branches this supplies the paramedian area and the short circumferential uh, circumferential branches supplies this lateral area that is where the corticospinal fibers there on the basilar part and the long circumferential branches supplies the lateral as well as the posterior part and this anterior inferior cerebellar artery supplies the lower part of the pons okay and the venous uh, drainage it goes to the inferior petrol sinus and the basilar plexus thank you